give everyone about 30 seconds to come in. And I just want to thank Aaron for helping me out here this morning or this afternoon, really, <laughs> with the um, with the waiting room and the video. So today it is um, our second session of the Leadership Academy. Thanks for coming back and joining me today. I'm excited to host this for us every month. And um, I think that leadership is everything. I think that leadership is influence and it's about really developing the, the intuition and the skill set. It's interesting, right? Because leadership, there's, there's soft skills and there are what we might call hard skills. And so I believe that leadership and your ability to lead will impact every area of your life and it will have a direct effect on your level of success. And I think that leadership, uh, it is about influencing others and it is about how that can impact the lives of others, but it also starts with ourselves. So I'm gonna encourage you to take notes as we have this conversation today. I think we're gonna have some, I trust some pearls of wisdom for you. Um, I have been and continue to develop my leadership uh, for a long time, and it has definitely changed my world, and it has given me amazing advantages, but more than anything, leadership and my ability to lead has given me immense satisfaction because I get to see not only the growth in myself, but the growth in other people. And how many of you can say that that's one of the reasons why you wanna grow your leadership is because you wanna make an impact on other people? Yeah, of course, sure. Um, <clears throat> and so if we're going to really impact the lives of other people, then it stands to reason that we have to really look at how we grow ourselves. And so today I'm going to take a lot of the content and material for um, today's lesson for our, our conversation here in the Leadership Academy um, from someone who I think is a great leader and who really has stood out as one of the uh, most prominent thought leaders um, on leadership itself, and that's Greg Rochelle. And um, so many of you um, probably have some someone's name pops up when you think of leadership, right? So right now, if before hearing Greg's name, if you thought leadership, who would be that person, right? And so I want you to continue to study and learn from great leaders around you. And there are great leaders within our own company. There are great leaders in other, in other businesses. There are great leaders uh, in, in our history and um, they all, they wanna share with you. So I think that's another thing about leadership is that you're willing to share and you're willing to teach. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Greg Rochelle, he may be another person to add to the list. And so some of the, the uh, things I'm gonna talk to you about come from, from some of his past teachings and podcast episodes. So are you ready to dig in? Say yes. I want you to talk to me because I don't want this to be a monologue. Right? I see thumbs up. I see nodding heads. That's great. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about habits. We're going to talk about habits because habits will make or break you. Right? Would you agree? Yes. And I think there are, there are certain high impact habits that will help you to become more successful as a leader. And then I believe that those habits really start to identify you as a leader. And so that, that is where we're gonna start our conversation today. There's a great quote from another powerful um, teacher on leadership and that's John Maxwell. And this is his quote. He says that he can predict the long-term outcome of your success if you show him your daily habits. So he can predict long -term, your, your outcome of long-term success by taking a look at your daily habits. So your habits matter more than you can imagine. And the potential of your leadership is a direct reflection of the quality of your habits. So we, we are working from habits all the time, right? We're on, we're on sometimes some of that autopilot. And so this is an opportunity for us to examine our habits and ask whether or not they're really, really serving us and helping us develop more as a leader. Because write this down, you are what you repeatedly do. You are what you repeatedly do. So if we take some inventory right now and, and kind of unpack that a little bit and we take a look at some things that you're doing on a daily basis, 
Do you want all of those things to rep represent who you are and reflect who you are? Or is there an opportunity to make some adjustments? Right, because the power of being a great leader is that you're able to look within, right? That you're able to be introspective and you're able to make adjustments for yourself and your, and your own behavior. And so if you are what you repeatedly do, what are the things that are showing up on your calendar or in your daily practice on a regular basis? And are those habits moving you forward and closer to your goals or could they be actually holding you back? So many of you are, are, are leading, uh, well, you're all leading your own business, but many of you have other people on your team as well, right? And so when you lead with integrity, your team is going to respond to that, right? When you lead with intensity, your team is gonna to respond to that as well. So there's an old saying, speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. So when we look at habits, remember your potential for your leadership is a direct reflection of your habits. The potential of your leadership is a direct reflection of your habits. So when you show up as a leader in your business, whether you have a team or not, what do those habits say about you and say about the trajectory of your business? If you are running a team, how do the team members around you start to mirror your activities and your habits, right? Because you're there as their leader. So you have influence and you have you know, the ability to inspire. So some of us are on the leadership team, right? So we have to think about that too. How is our, um, how are our habits in the way that we show up creating influence and inspiring people around us? So I just wanna pause there for a minute and give you a second to think about what we've just said and kind of digest it a little bit. And now I want you to write down a couple of habits that you know are currently not serving you. Write down a habit one or two that are currently not serving you. And look, here's what I think is important for us to look at too. I think most successful people, we would, you know, we all have to really understand that most successful people are not great at everything. You can't be great at everything. So as you're writing down something that maybe is not currently serving you, please just stay in a place of curiosity and be kind to yourself and, and understand that it's probably an opportunity, right? Everybody with me? Does anyone wanna share something? Because I'm sure that whatever you share will be helpful and supportive to somebody else if you'd like. Who wants to share a habit that they know is currently not serving them? I'll go. Scott. Unhealthy eating. Unhealthy eating. Okay, so that's a habit currently not serving you because what you put in your body is super important. Yeah, and I can tell that my body's fatigued and I'm not as energized and I'm more tired throughout the day and obviously not in the best shape I've ever been in. So definitely yeah. that as well. Yeah, and how does that affect your leadership, personal leadership, your leadership of your business and your market center? You're on the uh, PC team I, now. Energy-wise, uh, how much I can get done, how much energy I can focus. Um, actually, my overall overall focus throughout the day as well is has its ups and downs rather than a nice steady pace of being in control of my uh, emotions. Yeah, thank you for sharing. So, Scott, what's one small thing you can do to move yourself in a better direction and create a different habit around eating or the food you're putting in your body. Get back to the grocery shopping and food prepping I was doing a couple months ago. Okay, so what exactly does it look like? So you can get really clear, like you wanna start the grocery shopping probably? Yeah, um, I already know exactly what I can food prep, how much I need of it. It's just time blocking the time to go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. When will you do that? Uh, <laughs> how important is it to you to change the habit? And thank you for letting me coach you in front of the group. Of course, of course. Um, usually it would be within this time period. I have a bunch of Zoom meetings this afternoon, so I chose the growth of that rather than the grocery shopping. That's okay. Yep. That's all right. But when when can you start that process? 
tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We'll come yeah. back to some things. So one small change is Scott's going to start to grocery shop with the intention. And I, I would just add to maybe create a master grocery list of the, of the foods you want to have. Oh, it's there. Yeah. It's already okay. written down. Yeah. All right, cool. Anyone else have something they'd like to share? What's one habit that you're currently in that is not serving you that you'd like to change? I'll share. Okay. Um, so I've been trying to time block, but I think that my blocks were too broad. Mm. And I, I, so I'm, I'm getting distracted because I've got a million things to do. And so like, having general time blocks rather than very specific time actions um it's like oh make calls hmm. you know and then i get distracted doing some other thing so what i'm trying to do is break it down even smaller into who i'm calling what we're talking about be prepared and 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 making the time blocks actually smaller and it's I, i'm hoping i haven't acted on it yet because i've been training all day today but this is my goal yesterday is to set this up and so what i'm hoping with these more precise time blocks that i'll actually do it i'll be less distracted and more actionable awesome okay so barb what i heard you say is that you the habit you want to get away from is is creating time blocks that are too big in general and not specific so you're going to create a new habit around tightening that up. So more specific time, you're, you're using your time more specifically, breaking it down smaller, and you're going to not hope, you're going to trust that that's going to work. Okay. So um, hope is not a strategy. So you're going to trust that it will, will work because it has been proven to work. That's what I want you to tell yourself. Okay. And I'll keep track of it so that if it's not working, I'll make another change. Good. I love that. Awesome. Thank you. All right, what, we have time for one more. <clears throat> Habit you want to change. One more. Oh, Thank I'll you, Jean. Um, I've recently started to take uh, steps to actually improve my game a little bit because I've gotten very lazy since... COVID, working at home, and uh, I'm not having the productivity that I normally have when I would work in the office. So you've gotten comfortable. Pardon? You got so, comfortable, not lazy. Well, I've been I've been more or less operating on the principle of my one thing, which is I've been doing what I, you know, the twenty percent, the thing I have to do to be productive, mm -hmm. or what I have to do to make money which has been successful, but not, not something that would move me ahead so much as just maintain a good status quo. But, you know, I recently changed my diet, lost 25 pounds. I'm exercising regularly. Yeah. That, was, that was a tough one. And, um, and I find that I feel better because I'm exercising regularly plus eating better. And, um, I want to I want to raise the, the the level of the rest of my discipline, which I think I actually think that going back to the office would be I've been I've been reluctant because I've gotten so used to being home and doing what I have to do. But I, I frankly think going into the office would be a discipline that I need to pick up again going towards um, this. So so that could be one small habit, right? Is to start going back to the office. Would that be daily? I would say uh, yes. I would say that. I mean, I used to go to the office seven days a week, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd be, I'd have more productive time. My time blocking would be bad, and time blocking is my other, the other big issue that I have. I think. But um, going back to the office for the first, first part of that, where you isolate yourself, you're not as distracted, and uh, I get a lot more done. Now, it's not the same for everyone. I think. Right. It is for me. Okay, awesome. So thank you for that. So um, I want to keep moving through some of the material here, but I will say this, everyone. 
I, I trust everybody wrote something down, right? That there is some habit you're aware of that is just not serving you. So then I want you to think about what is one small way that you can start moving the needle in the other direction? Because when we talk about habits, um, remember, right? Like we have habits all the time. We're, we're, we're doing things on autopilot, like brushing our teeth is always the example everyone gives. And I think that for some of us, when we start to become aware of those habits that are no longer serving us, we think we need this big radical change, right? And so I'll just use the example that a lot of people can relate to like um, wanting to lose weight, right? So people think there's this like huge radical change. I have to cut my calorie intake by a thousand calories. I have to exercise five or six times a week. I but the truth is sometimes one small change can make a huge impact, right? cutting out sugar, or cutting out white flour, or moving your body a little bit every day, and allowing that one habit, that one small change, to then create the next small change. And so we call that the compound effect, right? So that as you start to become aware of those habits that are not serving you, please don't think you have to chase some big, super big, giant new habit. It could just be one small thing that you change that starts to tilt the scales in the other direction, right? And so a couple of books I can recommend on this topic. One is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. That's been out for a while. I read that book several, several years ago. Very good. Darren Hardy is the publisher behind Success Magazine. Um, another book that I've heard a lot about recently uh, is uh, the book by James Clear, Atomic Habits. That's another one I would recommend. And um, there's another book called The Power of Habit. I can't tell you the author, but it's, uh, that's another one that talks about the incredible impact small changes make, which is a lot around Gary Keller's premise of the one thing, right? It's knowing that there's a domino effect. So I just wanna say, you know, don't feel like you have to chase after this big giant super habit. It could just be one small thing that builds on the next small thing. Because what leaders know is that it's about consistency. If we look at leadership as a whole and we look at what separates successful people from others, it's that successful people do things consistently where other people just do things occasionally. Can, can you agree to that? The power of being consistent. Who can say they've seen that in their own business, right? Like the results, the difference between the results you get from occasionally generation versus consistently generation, right? Who can agree to that? So in developing your leadership, and becoming a person of influence, we're talking today about how that leadership has to start here with our personal leadership. And specifically today we're talking about habits, okay? Talking about habits. And so um, I think, again, it's about the consistency and how those, those incremental consistent habits build on very big results for us, right? Okay, any questions, comments so far? Okay, so along this conversation, I think we also have to talk about what, what happens to us in the pursuit of change, what happens to us in the pursuit of developing better habits, what can start to come into play? Like right now you might feel inspired, right? And that inspiration leads to motivation and clarity and you set out on the path. Uh, I'm gonna use Scott as an example, he's gonna go grocery shopping tomorrow with a whole new intentionality and he's going to meal prep and what could happen not that we think Scott's going to do this but what could happen to Scott sooner or later Scott what do you think might happen in a few weeks um shirts fit a little better <laughs> that could happen. That would be great. Your clothes feel better. But could it be true that you might lose a little bit of that motivation? It's possible. Definitely. Definitely. Possible. Right? So not trying to be Debbie Downer, but I want to be realistic here, right? Because has anyone experienced that where they're super excited, motivated, and inspired to make change, right? And then somehow along the way, something happens to throw us off our game, either internally their mindset or externally something out here changes right and suddenly we're off track 
Am I the only one who's ever experienced that? Okay, right, so we have to, so why are we talking about it? Because we have to be aware of it. We have to know that we can have contingency plans. We need to know we can offset that, right? So how do we prepare for what could come up as a roadblock or a minor setback? Accountability partner. Could be an accountability partner for sure. What does the accountability partner help you accomplish? Helps you stay on track. Yeah. You know why? Because the accountability conversation is based in reality. So write that down, right? Reality-based conversations along the way with someone like an accountability partner can help us stay on track. The other thing that will really help is if we can stay focused on the how and not just the what. So what do I mean by that? So Scott, I'm gonna keep using your example. So we have to move past the, okay, what is it that I intend to do, right? I intend to eat better, great, but how will you do that, right? We have to get into some of the specifics around the plan itself, right? So in other words, you can't just focus on the goal. So maybe your goal is to time block better, to lead generate more, great. How will you do it? We gotta get into the specifics around the strategy because the goal itself isn't gonna determine your success, am I right? What determines your outcome? The system, the approach. The, the right? system. Yeah, the system, the approach. So make sure you focus as much on the how as you do on the what. The other thing that you want to be aware of that can get in your way, and, and this is so important as a leader, because remember, whatever we are able to work through ourselves and process and, and the ability to look at things like this and say, okay, this is no longer serving me. I need to make that change. I'm going to focus on how I'm going to do it. Um, it means that because you live it, you can teach it. That's why this is a part of a leadership conversation, right? Because your ability to be self-led is also your ability to teach and hold other people accountable to it, right? So that's why this is so powerful. So another thing to keep in mind in the pursuit of changing habits and, and creating new goals is that you might not see progress very quickly. Okay, depending on what you're setting out to do, some things might feel like, oh, that, that, okay, immediately I'm seeing the difference. But a lot of these changes are going to show up very incrementally, right? And so you have to be willing to accept that those small changes are working, right? You don't want to give up too soon. So remember, you might not see progress fast enough, but it's okay because you're working through the system, you're working through the process. So it is, it is making change, right? Because we don't want to create any kind of negative um, self-talk, self-perception, right? We don't want to self-sabotage our own success journey. I'm sure no one's ever done that on this call, right? No one's ever self-sabotaged before, right? Yeah. So look, at the end of the day, we all have our own feelings whether brief or not, of, of leadership insecurities, right? And we just have to make sure that they that those insecurities actually are just a call to action to work through something and not for us to get stuck behind that negative thinking or, or create self-sabotaging habits because we're all capable of so much. We're all capable of amazing things. And I, I think that we have to work through any of those um, doubts when they come up. And that's where an accountability partner might come in too, right? So as a leader, I'm going to ask you, let, let's take a pause for a second. As a leader, um, I want you to write this down on your paper. I am a leader who loves fill in the blank. I am a leader who loves fill in the blank. Another fill in the blank. I am a leader who develops fill in the blank. I am a leader who develops. Next one. I am a leader who is known for fill in the blank. I am a leader who's known for 
fill in the blank. My goal each month is for us to ask ourselves questions that really pop our leadership lid open, that really have us become much more aware of who we are and who we wanna be in this world. So I'm gonna ask if someone would like to share, a couple of you, you can put in the chat too if you'd rather not speak, but when, when I asked you, you're a leader who loves, what did you say? You're a leader who loves? I put love being part of a team. You're a leader who loves being part of a team. Okay, great. I love it. I heard someone else. Thanks, Lori. I heard someone else jump on. I said exploring. Yeah. You're a leader who loves exploring. Nice. Thank you. Jean? I'm a leader who loves to develop talent. Nice. I love that. Good. One more. Mine was I'm a leader who loves people. Just, I was a little... Generic, a little general there, but I, I love people, right? And that's what drives me. Awesome. That's great. Okay. How about the next one? I am a leader who develops, what did you say there? Others' ability to self-discover. Nice. Very nice. Love that, Rebecca. Anybody else? I wrote, develop the confidence in others for them to grow. Nice. Lori yeah. has new skills. I'm a leader who develops new skills routinely. Good. Anybody else? I wrote uh, uh, develops relationships. Great. Who develops relationships. Good. So I filled it in with, I am a leader who develops other leaders. No right, right or wrong answers here. They're all perfect. And the last one, I am a leader who's known for, what are you known for? Integrity. Beautiful. What else? What are you known for as a leader? Having the answers. Okay, you're known for having the answers. Yes, Lori, we we love you. It's not something <laughs> that I actually feel good about, but it's well, and you know, that's an interesting <laughs> thing there too. You know, what Lori just said. Sometimes we can be known for some things and it could be very good, but do you want to be known for more than that, right? That's maybe another opportunity, right? Uh, one more. I would say I'm one who's known for sharing the knowledge I've gained over 16 years with the new agents and mentoring them. So you want to, you're, you want to be known as a leader who mentors others. Correct. Beautiful. I love that. Great. So for me, I want to be known for my ability to inspire others to think. That's great. All right. So we're talking about habits today as an opportunity for us to expand our leadership capability and our leadership impact. Um, and I think, you know, we've talked about identifying and, and, we, and, and, you know, there's a lot to cover in an hour, right? So I'm just giving you a lot of food for thought, and I will encourage you to put some time in uh, to, to the questions and to the conversations that we have every month on this call, right? So that you can really expand your thinking. And if I can help with anything, just reach out um, because, you know, when we look at and examine, let's say our habits, you might, you might need to talk it through or figure some things out about redirecting your energy and your thoughts and creating some new habits that will increase your leadership impact, that will increase your ability to influence others. And again, to, to, to be able to lead yourself, right? And know that any change you make is positive change, right? Remember the small incremental changes are really important because it is a compound effect. You know, the bucket that is sitting outside with one drop of rain and it may not seem like much until the rain keeps falling and the, suddenly the bucket is full, right? So that's the same thing with your, your journey here because um, I have another quote here in my notes by Zig Ziglar. You don't have to be great to start, but you do need to start to be great. You don't have to be great to start, but you do need to start to be great. 
So any positive change immediately that you can start is going to create this positive trajectory, right? Because when you change your habits, you will change your life. I mean, there's no way around that because as you start to do different things, you're gonna see different results. So um, there's been a lot of studies on this and they've said that 40% of the actions that you do every day are a result of your habits, not your decisions. 40% of the actions you do every day are the result of your habits, not your decisions. Tell me what that means to you when you hear that. How does that sit with you? In a way, it's kind of a relief because if I develop good habits, then I don't have to think about everything. It's just, it's automatic and just will do it. And the other 60% um, I can worry about. I love where your mind took you, Barb, because here's what's so interesting and fascinating about that statistic. It can work either way for you, right? So I love that you immediately thought, wow, so if I can develop good habits, right, good habits, then that's going to set me on this autopilot, right, of, of, you know, doing things without thinking that are moving me towards this powerful outcome, which is great. Yet, what if a lot of what we do without thinking uh, are, let's call them negative habits or things that don't serve us? What could that outcome look like? Right. So the key is to to accept the fact that we do we are habitual people as, as human beings, we are habitual. Right. So we have to really get more awake around what are those habits that we find ourselves in. Right. Because doing something is a habit and not doing something is a habit. And if we were to exercise our right to choose more often and continue to choose those things that are much more positive and much more in alignment with what we say we want in terms of our goals, will we see different outcomes, right? Anybody else have any thoughts on that, on that statement around uh, the research showing that 40% of the actions we do every day are the result of our habits and not our decisions? Well, I think, Anna, it's just that when when you can align those habits with the goals that you have in mind, you know, and really be mindful on a 24 hour level that you are doing those habits that you know are going to get you there. That can be such a game changer, you know, and, and, and every day just having that moment of did I was I there? Did I hit it? Did it happen? Did that habit happen? You know, so it's it just becomes it becomes part of your daily routine even. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it all comes back to what we said a few minutes ago, right, about the small incremental changes and, and like what Gary talks about in the one thing. The fastest way for you to accomplish big things is to be consistent around the small things, the small right things, the small right things, right? So keep that in mind, everyone. It's about discernment and discernment is knowing, you know, the difference between not just right and wrong, but Discernment is about making wise choices. That's how I would define discernment, right? So when you do the small things consistently, the small right things consistently, it's gonna lead to big results. It's gonna lead to extraordinary results, right? So the question now becomes, well, which habit do I start with? So I think what Deb was just saying is important is, is you know, what are the goals that you have? And how do you start to make sure your actions are really in alignment with what you say you want? And I've been there too, guys. I've been there too. Like where I'm like, okay, this is what I want. This is my goal. And yet when I take a look and examine how I'm running my day, uh, you know, there have been a lot of times where I've realized my day is really running me and I'm not focused on all the right habits that are lining up with what I say I want. And, and when I make those changes, I suddenly are, I'm doing things with a little bit more ease and less stress and I'm more creative because I'm in synergy with my own goal. And I think sometimes we talk about synergy as the feeling we wanna have with people. Well, what about the relationship you have with your goals and your own habits? Are you in synergy with what you say you want out of life, right? And so that can change right now from this conversation 
um, any one of us can say, okay, starting right now, I'm gonna change the way I think about X. I'm going to do this little thing differently and it, it's gonna create a compound effect, right? So decide today as a result of this conversation, if you don't already have some clarity around it from the beginning of the call, which habit do you wanna start with? Not habits, one habit. What is one habit that if you could start with that habit and make some positive changes around it would have a major impact in your whole life. Right, think about that. Because I know we all, you know, as professionals, we all have career goals, that's great. Yet maybe changing that one habit around your diet, your well, your health, you know, that, that's gonna make a huge impact on your energy, your productivity, right? As Scott was saying in the beginning of the call. Well, what is it for you? So write, write it down if you don't already have that clear. Which habit do you want to start with? And chunk it down. Chunk it down. Don't make it so big. Make it small. Make it something that you can see you can build on, creating new habits, something that's going to allow you to build discipline around the habit. Right, because discipline is something we can build. Another, another important concept, I think, in this conversation, because again, we're talking a lot about the what. Uh, I want you to focus on the how, remember, right? How will you do it? That's the next thing after you decide that. But I think we also have to talk for a minute about who, right? So write that word down, right, who. And I'm not asking you to identify who can help you, which I'm wondering how many of you went there. I want you to ask yourself, who do you intend to become in the process of creating these new habits, habit that we're starting with, right? As you are growing in your leadership, as you are developing powerful habits, as you start with one at a time and build on it, who do you want to become in the process? This will require a little time. You may want to journal on this, right? So to, to explore this, unpack this a little bit more, let's just talk for a moment about great leaders. Who are they when I say great leaders? Who comes to mind for you? It's going to be different for all of us, right? Jot it down if you need to. Who are some great leaders that come to mind? Could be current leaders, could be historical figures, could be people you've never met before, right? What makes them such a great leader? And I'd love to hear many of you share, right? Let's come up with some, some adjectives. Let's come up with some you know, terms, some, some understanding around how they think and how they behave and how they show up, right? What makes someone a great leader? Go. Jacqueline, there, I, how did I know you were gonna come? That was good timing. Uh, somebody who believes in others. Love that, someone who believes in other people. How do you know that they believe in other people? Because because you can think that, right? But that doesn't mean that you would know that about them. So how do you know that there's someone who believes in other people? Uh, for me personally, um, it would be on a personal level. So interacting with somebody, um, knowing that their intentions and their encouragement and different things like that come from a genuine place. So they're encouraging. Right, you know that they believe in other people because they encourage other people. They mentor, or teach, or coach. Right? They're they're doing they're doing something so that it's evident that that that's you know how they feel. Right? Great, love it. What else? What else makes a great leader a great leader, Lori? They surround themselves with other great leaders. They hang out with other great leaders. Love it. What else? They're a person of integrity. They're a person of integrity. 
And and I'm, again, I'm I'm assuming that's evident in what they do and what they say, right? You can you know you can you can hear their integrity through their actions and their words. Their audio and their video match, right? <gasps> Love that. That's perfect. Their audio and video match. Everyone knows what Matt means by that, right? They do what they say they're going to do. Yep. Great. Thank you. What else? They're thought provoking. Okay. They get you to think. They get you to think. Great. Write this all down, everyone. What else? They inspire people. Oh, they're inspiring. They inspire other people. Okay. To to think or to take action, right? Good, love that, thank you, Jean. Barb, did you wanna say something? I was just gonna say people that set an example, people that walk the walk, so that what, I mean, I guess audio and video match is similar, but that, that they are also doing what they're suggesting to other people. They lead by example. By example. Yeah, great. What else? They're typically humble. And, and they put others first. Love that. They're humble and put others first. What else makes a leader a great leader? I think someone, did, did you say authentic? I heard authentic. Someone said, right, they're, they're real. What else? They're empathetic and they show gratitude. Okay, they express gratitude. They're empathetic to others. Yes, definitely. You know, I'm going to say in the category of their real um, and authentic, they're not afraid to be vulnerable. They're not afraid to show you that they don't always have it all together all the time. <laughs> you literally taking all my words. Matt took my first one. You just took my last one. <laughs> I think, I think also they're not judgmental. Okay, they're open-minded, they're not judgmental, right? What else? I think, I think that there's also a, um, a, a willingness to proceed in spite of what might be problematic. Some might call that even fearlessness, that okay. there's a dedication to the, regardless of whatever is in oh, front of us. Yeah. I love that they're fearless, right? And and so look, that doesn't mean that they're not human, right? But they're willing to put themselves out there. They go the extra mile. They might be willing to take a risk, right? So I love that, Hazen. I, my one and only tattoo says fearless, not because I necessarily think I am all the time, but because I want to remind myself to be, right? So I like that. I like that a lot. All right, what else? One, one or two more? Are they givers? Leaders are givers? Yeah. They give of their time, they give of their knowledge, whatever. Deb? Approachable. Okay, they're approachable. So you're getting a nice list, right? I'm sure if you could spend another few minutes on this, you could come up with more attributes of what makes a leader a great leader. So I wanna ask you to look at your list and ask yourself, who do I wanna become? What are my strengths already that showed up on this list? What do I want to develop? What on this list and other things you could add to the list do I feel is true to my character internally, but maybe I need to put it out there more externally? That could be a leadership gap right? That you are a person of integrity, that you are someone who, uh, you know, wants to, to, you know, inspire others and encourage others and, and share and teach, but maybe you don't put yourself out there enough, right? So that could be what we call a gap. So right now, you don't have to share this, just put stars next to the ones that you want to develop. Or, or actually, let me give you a different, I'm going to give, sorry, cancel. Put a star next to the ones that you feel you have already and kind of, you know, naturally in place and you're using and put a plus sign next to the ones you want to develop. You know, if we've learned anything from being in this environment, right, in Keller Williams, we know that we have to be intentional 
about who we want to become. We have to be intentional about what we want to achieve. We have to be intentional about how we want to get there. So all of this requires just a little bit of time and a little bit of work, right? So if you're going to put time into something, why not put it into becoming the best version of yourself, right? Because that is the greatest tool in your toolbox right now, right? So some things I didn't hear, I don't think I heard is, you know, some leaders are disciplined, right? Now, they either have eased into that because of their nature, or if you're more like me, you fight clawing your way into discipline because it's just kind of not your nature. <laughs> I've had to learn the power of discipline over the years, and I'm still learning the power of discipline. Uh, I'm not naturally a disciplined person. Does that mean that I can't be successful? No, it just means I have to work harder at it, right? And so, but, but yet discipline is the key to seeing those habits, right, become with, without thinking something that you're just experiencing the results of. So I think that, you know, leaders are disciplined and how they get there can be different depending on our behavior profile. Um, but if you want to be more disciplined as a leader, what's one small thing you can start with today? right? Or tomorrow, maybe it's not hitting the snooze button and getting up when you say you want to get up, right? You can laugh, right? It's a little thing. But if you want to be a person of integrity, I think a lot of times we think about how to be in integrity with other people. And we forget to ask ourselves, are we in or out of integrity with ourselves? Right? And something as small as the alarm, right? If you say you want to get up every morning at 6am, but yet you hit the snooze button 17 times, you don't get up till 645, What's going on there, right? So what is your intention? And it's amazing how when you make some decisions around something that seems benign like that can create a very, very compound effect, profound effect in other areas of your life, right? So what's your snooze button? Maybe it's not the snooze button, but maybe it is something small that you need to make some changes on so that those small wise habits that you start to focus on create a compound effect over time, right? Anybody get some good stuff out of this conversation today? Okay, tell me, we have a couple more minutes. We're gonna uh, wrap this up, but just tell me so far what's kind of like a highing in your head right now. Put it in the chat. Tell me what you're pulling away from this. Okay, so remember, um, hope is not a strategy. We have to be intentional. Growth is something that we have to focus on uh, and we have to be intentional around. And so is our leadership. You know, if you want to grow your leadership, then it is about knowing that your habits can affect your leadership. So what is it that you want to be more intentional about? What is that one small habit that you want to change, right? What's your snooze button? It could be some other form of procrastination. It could be even the way you interact with people, right? Like maybe it's to be more aware. I just had this conversation with someone last week and they said that one small thing they were going to work on was interrupting people less. That they became aware that they have a habit of interjecting and interrupting people in the middle of their conversation, you know, during cuddles and masterminds, and they were gonna work on, on that. That that one small change could make a huge change in that person's leadership and how others respond to them, right? Which, which let's face it, the way people respond to you is gonna have an impact on your leadership, yes or no. You can have great intentions, but what the audio and video not matching and then the way that you're out there and your energy is being received, that can have an impact on your leadership if people feel that they can't connect with you, right? So that was that, that leader's uh, one small habit that they were going to work on was interrupting people less, right? So what's, what are some other habits? You know, maybe, maybe, um, it's interesting how our mind can go in the direction of identifying uh, what we think is negative, right? What we're doing, but how about the things you're not doing? Can that be just as negative, right? So maybe the habit you wanna change is the habit you've gotten into where you avoid having difficult conversations, right? You just kind of check out, right? And we know that the relationship is the conversation, right? So that could be a habit you want to change. So my intention is that at the end of this call, you've identified some habit that you want to work on. Maybe you have a couple of others, but let's start with one. 
right? What is the one habit that you want to really redirect and change because it's going to bring you into a much more positive uh, direction with your energy lining up with your goals and your intentions lining up with your goals. And that will create small incremental successes for you, right? And then the other thing we talked about too around habits is, you know, who do you want to become and how do you want to show up as a leader? And what is something that you want to work on there? And I wonder how many of you are seeing a correlation between the habit and the who? I'm not sure. That could be for some of you starting to show up. Is there a correlation between the habit you need to change and how that shapes who you are as a leader? Yes or no? Can anybody tell me if they're having that connection? Yes? I definitely have, Anna, because um, just listening to this conversation, I know I have to be more aware of how people perceive things that I do and say, because I am very passionate about things, but I need to calm it down. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that, Kathy. You know, I think that that's a very um, exciting awareness to have for all of us, right? Like to understand, like, how, how do my intentions sometimes get misrepresented through the energy I bring to something, right? And, and I think that's awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Anybody else? You know, I'll go back to the beginning with my time blocking and being consistent. I think that consistency will engender trust in other people. Mm, so, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think just generally speaking, when you, when you, even one small habit, obviously it's a place where if, if it's a habit you, you want to form, you, you have disappointed yourself and not been doing that previously or being in a space where you think you need this new habit. And so once you start and it starts to become effective and it starts to take hold, then that just tends to snowball. So I think it, in, in, it's a generalized feeling better about yourself. Yeah. That, and then, you know, I, I know I can change one little habit. So if it's about your eating, well, when you're eating better, then you're more inclined to exercise. And if you're exercising, you're, you're less inclined to drink so much on the weekend. And then, you know, it starts going like to the next, to the next, and then you can get up earlier because you're not so tired. And, and so that in general, the, then the, the general person that you do become is a better leader. It just goes without saying. A hundred percent. So that's it. She, Lori just encapsulated everything about this call today. She's awesome. That was perfect. And that, yes, no, really. And that's why habits are such an important part of the conversation around leadership. And that's the premise of the atomic, the book, Atomic Habits. That's the premise of the book. The compound effect is exactly how Lori is able to summarize everything. That was perfect. So I see in the chat. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, some of your ahas and uh, I love the accountability partners, a reality-based conversation, uh, continually evaluating where I wanna be and grow into and who, what my habits are and how they're taking me there, uh, breaking it down to one very small thing. Yeah, just one small thing at a time. Remember, the only way to eat the elephant is one bite at a time. But because by nature, we are all high achievers, right? We, we Let's face it, you're all leaders already. That's why you're on the call because you want to grow more as a leader. You already know you're a leader, right? And so because of our type A personality or, or um, you know, the way that we're wired, right? We want, to, we want to just go in and blow it up and change everything right away. I know I do. And I have to remind myself that we can't sometimes. Like we have to look at how to take it one bite at a time, right? Because it is exactly what Lori said. That one small thing then leads to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And suddenly the compound effect is showing up, right? Um, let's see. Hazen said, every day has setbacks. Pressing through those, know what they are too, will result. Yeah, you know what that is, Hazen? That's grit. That's tenacity. It's grit. It's resiliency. That is also, I think, some characteristics of strong, passionate leaders, because just because you're a great leader doesn't mean you're going to have a perfect day. And just because you're a great leader doesn't mean that everything that you set out to do is going to be perfect and you have the Midas touch. No, right? But I think that powerful, strong leaders are much more open to 
making those pivots and changes and shifts and, and, and they work to become more and more resilient, right? And yes, we're human, I can say for myself, so I can, I can have like a pity party for a minute or two. And then I'm like, all right, so what am I doing next? right? Because staying stuck isn't going to help me. I have to be willing to say, okay, what's the solution? So I love that he's and put that in the chat, right? So I, uh, I really appreciate you all being here. I love having these conversations. I love learning from all of you. Um, and I appreciate you. So we have um, a couple of things I just want to mention. Um, we have a Facebook page for um, the Leadership Laboratory. Some of you have found your way there. Not everyone has though. Um, and I'm trying to bring it up on my screen unless someone's faster than me and can do it and put the link in the chat. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, Aaron, thanks. I meant to tell you that in the beginning of the call. So if you would like to continue the conversations like around our topics every month, or if you come across a podcast that relates to what we're talking about, I'll try to do the same thing. Like, you know, that's where we can share some things around the Leadership Academy material. And um, I think that that would be a great way for us to just stay connected to the topics and get resourceful and, and find other good um, resources to do that. Um, and then the other thing I just wanna plug is that I, I'm sure you've heard about it. I'm doing a book club starting March 8th on the happiness advantage. And how many of you plan to be a part of that? Oh, good. So listen, I'm gonna encourage you all to pick up this book. Um, because uh, first of all, Sean Aker is the keynote speaker at Family Reunion, but the happiness advantage is really understanding the power of positive psychology and how this can change your world. And basically it takes our, our, I'll say our assumption that when we achieve certain things, we become happier and turns that right on its side and says that we have it backwards. That as we become happier and we become clearer about who we are and who we wanna be in the world and we become more and more fulfilled, we find more success. And there are seven principles that he talks about in the book to help you really live through that. And that's what we're gonna do uh, each week in the book club. So we're gonna have four sessions starting on March 8th. It'll be every Tuesday in March um, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So I look forward to that and hope that many of you can be a part of the book club um, and uh, you know take, take some powerful things from that. All right, any other final thoughts or ahas or anything before we go? I was gonna say I've read that book and it's absolutely one of the best books ever. So I'm excited about that. I, I think I gave it away to someone else who I insisted had to read it and now I have to buy it again. But the, the experiments in that book are so cool. So cool. Like the one where they put everyone in a, in a place that looks like it's 1950 and the people get younger and it's just, I love it. So I yeah, hope it's a great read. It really is. Yeah. So, um, and I, so my first copy uh, was a hardcover. And um, then I too think I gave mine to someone, Lori. So I had to order this one. And I love that it's a, it's a um, paperback and uh, it's just easy. I've high, you know, highlight right in it and stuff. So, all right, yeah. everyone have a wonderful day. And uh, I thank you again for participating next month when we do our next Leadership Academy. We're gonna talk about um, characteristics of a leader. And uh, I'm gonna offer you the opportunity to take an assessment that Allison Orlando has already taken. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about that, okay? So I'll see you next month. Bye. Thanks, Anna.